Hey, how's it going? My name is Jackie Fish and welcome back to some more Total War Thrones of Britannia. So we are back and I want to go ahead and wish everyone a Merry Christmas if you celebrated it. I hope you had a really, really good day. I myself did. I ate far too much food um, and just enjoyed myself. It was nice not having to worry about YouTube for a day. I turned off my phone and you know basically just spent some good family time, which was awesome. And hopefully you guys did as well. But we are back with another Thrones of Britannia battle and I'm really looking forward to it. It's nice to actually come back after a you know a couple days break and dive back into a replay. I'm really excited for the type of videos that I want to be making in the new year. It's going to be adding in your know, whole range of new different content, trying to bring Warhammer back onto the channel, along with a few more Paradox games as well as we do gear up for Thrones of Britannia. That, that really isn't you know I mean, Thrones of Britannia, sorry, Three Kingdoms and Imperator Rome. So yeah, we're going to be gearing up for them games, adding in more stuff onto the channel, maybe some Paradox Challenge videos, just to hopefully a range of you know, fun and exciting videos so yeah make sure to go ahead and keep an eye out for them but today's battle is going to be thrones of britannia obviously and we are going to be taking this replay from a trusted member of the discord who sent this in this is from his head to head with another member of the discord uh, one of them is playing as the welsh and the other one is taking command of an ai army because he's playing as a different faction however they are in a head to head which means that the other person always gets to control the ai army so he's gonna be trying to look to do as much damage to the Welsh as possible. Um, it's also quite cool as the Norse are coming in off of boats, so, you know, kind of a true Viking style, just going ahead and getting all their soldiers off. And also, it's kind of cool to see that the general is going to be the first man off of the boats, besides obviously the horses. So yeah, we'll be seeing the Norse, maybe not necessarily trying to win this battle, but just trying to inflict as much damage as possible to then make it easier for him and the faction he is playing to go ahead and take out the uh, this other Welsh faction and secure victory for himself on the campaign map. I just always like these head-to-heads because I feel like there's always a lot of stuff on the line and, you know, it's not really just like a normal online battle where if you lose some units, who cares? Well, if you lose some units in this, you're going to have to re-recruit them and it's going to cost you, whereas the other person has nothing to lose because they're just using a random AI army, right? I just always like that aspect, and that's why I enjoy the head-to-head -head between me and Darren so much. But anyway, so yes, the Norse army is going to consist of some pretty veteran troops. We have a lot of free chevrons, some one chevron, some tier two infantry as well, which is going to be nice as the cavalry does get chased down. And this is a really smart move here by the Welsh. The Norse are going to be busy getting their soldiers off of these boats constantly. So this will allow the Welsh to use their cavalry really effectively and basically just hit all of these horses because they do outnumber them and I think, I believe the Welsh horses are going to be better than the Norse. So they'll hopefully be able to kill all of these horses before the Norse can even get their men off of the boats. Now, they're doing a good job of just retreating back, trying to wait until more reinforcements do arrive. However, it's going to be quite costly and it seems like one of these guys are going to get caught or the javelins are going to get thrown out and that's going to be devastating into the rear of the Eastern Horsemen. And they're actually going to be able to get a really good charge off as well. With more javelins coming in. Yeah, a double charge off from them bad boys. That's really smart. Seems like the Norse are going to decide to come round, but then quickly go back. And what you really need now is some spearmen. I'm not sure if sending the javelins up really quickly is going to be great. If they can get the javelins up to throw behind them, which seems like the plan is, that's going to be effective. However, if the Welsh then decide to turn around and charge them, I think we're going to see them skirmishes dying very quickly. Oh my god, that's all. Oh my god, I've never seen that kill animation before. That was brutal. My god! Um, yeah, and it seems like the Welsh are doing exactly that. You know, they're going to go ahead and hit these guys quickly. They're going to take a few javelin fires, then charge in. And I think this is going to be deadly for the, uh, the Norsemen. Because unfortunately, the skirmishers, even though they throw spears, they still use a sword and shield. So, you know, they're basically going to be at a huge disadvantage. These javelins are going to be getting some good throws off into the side of them horses, though. Hopefully killing quite a few of them. So this is not too bad. Maybe sacrificing one unit to kill the other one. However, these horses are now broken, and that's going to allow the Welsh to quickly close the distance. It was going pretty well if they could have kept that unit in bay. However, the cavalry is just going to run through them. That impact was crazy seeing them go down. The Norse are now finally getting some more spearmen off of their boats. And this is what I was saying. It's just so good to do this when you're fighting a naval invasion because you can just basically harass the enemy forces and take out. If they, they, they put the wrong units on the beach, you can really dive in. And as we can see, we've got one unit of horses right here, basically engaging the entire Norse army, holding it at bay. Uh, you know, they're going to lose horses here, but it seems like it's definitely been worth it killing, what, two horses and then also both javelins without the javelins really losing many, uh, being able to let loose many of their arrows or their, their javelins. 
They did take a few casualties, but they're mainly at you know, 50 to 75%. So overall, that was really, really good for the Welsh as they quickly retreat back from here. Going to look to get the hell out of this position and just basically save their horses. Oh, it does seem like the, the Norse do have a couple units of horses, but I think their horses were just always outclassed and they needed to get these spearmen, and these northern warband or eastern warband up here as quickly as possible to try and turn the tides. But, you know, it's not like they didn't do any damage. They definitely did harass these horses and taking them down is going to be pretty good. It's going to buy them enough time, though, on the beach ahead to quickly go ahead and reform up. We take a look at what the Welsh have, the defenders. We can see on their front line they have a bunch of these Welsh uh, levies which are really going to just get chopped to pieces by the tier 2 axemen that the Norsemen have. Uh, then back we have here, oh we nice, we have some mailed swordsmen, so a couple units of mailed swordsmen are going to go a long long way in this campaign. But again, this is the thing, it's not necessarily a huge thing that there are mailed swordsmen here, they're, they're good units, they're expensive units. And if the Norsemen can focus these down with missiles, get rear charges off them and kill these units, that's going to be huge because in Thrones of Britannia the recruitment system is now like Medieval 2 and these guys are on a timed recruitment so they only come around every 8 or so turns. So if you can kill these in battles, holy crap that's huge because the player physically can't recruit them for another 6 or 7 turns. Like that's massive right? So as the AI North player, like the guy, he's going to call him Debman just because I know it's I know it's him, Debman and Genku. Debman playing as the Norse are going to quickly come in and just try and you know, focus down these units here. He doesn't really care about these guys on the front line of a cavalry. I mean, the cavalry will be good to kill as well because I imagine they take a while. But taking out any of these tier 3 units are going to be massive for the campaign because it's going to put the other player at such a big disadvantage. And I was told as well that there is a really good revenge battle. The loser of this battle then brings their king in another battle up forward. So it's either going to be the Welsh losing and they're going to bring their king up. The player king is going to come forward or the AI Norse is going to die and the AI attacks with another army against the Welsh and they must have to hold. So if you guys want to see that on the channel, you want to see another head-to-head -head battle, then let me know in the comments. I always try and give you guys the lowdown on these battles as well. I just, I just feel like this, this is really cool because there's so much more at stake. Um, and even though the, the Welsh army does have these tier 3 swordsmen, they, they do already have a couple chevrons as well as, you know, whereas the uh, the Norse general over here is two silver chevrons. That's going to be putting him on par with them, probably, uh, even though he is a tier one general. But, you know, the tier ones for generals doesn't really mean they're, they're still just as good, honestly. They are very, very deadly. So cool, I think there's going to be a little bit of a lull in this battle as the Norsemen fit, like form up and prepare themselves and come closer to assault this final position right here. So let's just triple speed it. We'll go, go ahead and cut to when the, the assault does finally happen. I imagine they're just going to come around here and then assault this position. There is also a nice group of hidden horsemen. I mean, I doubt the Norse player really... You know, is going to be surprised by this cavalry. He knows that there is cavalry. There's a devastating charge at the beaches. Uh, so they don't, I mean, maybe he doesn't know where they are precisely. So this could come into play quite nicely. Um, I'm, I'm really excited to see how these uh, saw that these axemen do do. You know, some tier 2s, some tier 1s. But they also have a long axemen as well, which are going to be a very, very ferocious unit. If they can get into combat, they're going to do some serious damage, especially with them two bronze chevrons. So yeah, let's just jump ahead and we'll see the final conclusion of this battle and see who wins it. Because I'm curious to see who brings up their king in the next battle. The armies are ready to face off against one another. The archers are being brought to the front lines for the Welsh. We can see them covered by that shield wall. And the Norse are preparing themselves for this epic charge. They're going to just throw everything they have at this front line. As I said, just try and do as much damage as physically possible. I don't think the Norse have the ability to win this. However, if they can kill a general, deal some really serious damage to the tier threes, who knows what will happen. Because that's the thing as well, you know. Killing generals is so important in these head-to-heads. Because if you kill a general, you know, tier 5, 6, 7, 8 general... That means that general's not going to be fighting against you in future campaigns and battles. And it's going to set the other faction really far back. Something that I've learned for sure is keeping generals alive in head-to-heads is so important. Because they add so much to your army. is actually crazy. 
The Norse are going to be assaulting with everything they've got. The horsemen are still stationary though. And as you can see, they're quickly trying to focus down these Welsh male swordsmen. They are throwing some of these elite spear infantry at them, which probably aren't going to be doing anything new crazy. However, it's going to be able to whittle them down and keep them at bay. They're also using some shield biters. Oh, I didn't realize they have the shield bright biters. These guys are tier one, but they're basically just a slightly worse unit of uh, berserkers. So they're going to be doing great. This was a nice move here by the Norse player. Do they have any more shield biters? The Eastern Axemen are also getting in completely free. Oh, wow. This is going to be kind of deadly, you know? A lot of the archers are obviously doing some serious damage, focusing down the missiles here. But I, I don't know. I feel like this front line is just going to crumble, especially now the Norse General is in as well. These levy spearmen are not going to stand a chance. The archers are going to be doing serious damage, don't get me wrong. Like, serious damage. But as you can see, more reinforcements are having to be thrown up. The cavalry is also being engaged. Oh, coming out of the forest now, looking like it needs to make its pounce. The Norse cavalry is quickly going to turn to try and meet that. And it wouldn't have been a bad idea to maybe, you know, kind of leave some spearmen out on these flanks. It does look like this tier 1 uh, eastern spearmen is going to be getting destroyed by the tier 3 axemen. Yeah, obviously, they didn't really going to stand up against them. So maybe it would have been a good idea to leave this, uh, this spearman unit back. To engage right here as the Welsh are going to be descending in here and doing some pretty crazy damage off from that cavalry. Um, and yeah, all the infantry is now being thrown in here by the Welsh. They don't want to give up anything if they can help it. Their archer force is also looking really healthy, which is nice. The spearmen are going to be struggling, but I think everything else is going to be doing great. And as you can see, the spearmen on the Welsh are also really struggling against the heavy infantry. And wow, yeah, these shield biters are actually, as I guess you can see, going toe to toe with the tier 3 infantry. The shield biters are just such a deadly infantry. And as I said, every unit they kill here is just so big. The cavalry, though, has been smashed, even though some eastern marauders have charged in. As I said, it would have been better to maybe just send a unit of spearmen out here. They've killed some serious horsemen as well. But it's just not going to be enough. These horsemen are going to be able to like kind of just, like just move everywhere they want to go. The, the archers are also shooting them as well, trying to harass them as they flee. But I mean, that, that cavalry is just going to outmaneuver the spear of the axemen and come around and kill these guys. But they're taking out some few horsemen. As I said, it's an expensive unit to deal with as well. The front line is not looking good. Yeah, you can see the general has even had to go in right now. Wow, the Norse player is pushing this Welsh army to its limits. And if they can break in onto the marchers, kill this general, who knows? Is this general a tier 1 or tier 3? This general is a tier 1 general as well, so against these spearmen, it's going to be a difficult, difficult job. The Norse general as well is just carting down these spearmen as well. Really doing some great damage. The archers are positioning themselves on the flank, which is a good idea. Not a bad move right there. Both lines are throwing each other in. Yeah, this Norse general is not going to go down without a fight. They're always so tough to defeat. But this is not a bad move. I mean, honestly, if they have any other units, if only they had some cavalry, because they've completely collapsed in this battle line. They're doing some great damage to the Welsh spearmen, uh, sort uh, axemen even. The cavalry though is just running a muck back here, killing archers and infantry. I think they're going to start rear charging, but they're definitely taking down a large amount of infantry as they go. It's just these archers are still shooting. However, this is a great move here by the Norse player. He's managed to go ahead and get his spearmen, even though they are weak. He's managed to get them in against these archers, and they'll be able to do some good damage against them. Whittling down their HP, reducing this army down, um, and hopefully stopping them from shooting. I don't really know how they can still shoot. And unfortunately, that eastern unit is going to rout. Unfortunately, but they're, they're, as you see, they're killing some of these tier 3 units, so that's pretty goddamn important. And the spearmen are also just being cut down as well. Where's the cavalry? Okay, the cavalry is forming up now, preparing to probably rear charge. And it's looking like the Norse are giving up now. They're, they're, they've tried their best, they've done some great damage, they've killed a lot of spearmen. But they just can't break through the higher tier infantry, unfortunately. So this does mean in the next battle, if you guys want to see it, and you can let me know by just dropping a comment, dropping a like down below, um, letting me know you want to see the next battle. Um, apparently, the Norse King, I guess because the Norse are going to lose this battle, the Norse King comes up with a full stack to try and defeat, I think, this Welsh army. Uh, so yeah, we're going to see this Welsh army again pushed to its limit against a proper good King's army. So I think that would be very, very exciting. And that could be extremely costly for the Welsh. And I mean, I imagine they'd probably even be taken down. Else, Calling them pirates? I mean, I guess the Norse are pirates. 
in some some extent. You know, they are raiding and pillaging as they go. The cavalry charging in again. The cavalry's probably taking a bit of friendly fire as well. And it'd be so amazing if they could just finish off one of these units. Because killing these horses, I mean, these horses are taking severe damage right now. Unfortunately, they couldn't finish them off. But, yeah, these guys are going to take a while to replenish. So, when that next army comes up from the north, that's going to just, you know... This army isn't really capable of fighting. I mean, I imagine they get a turn or two of replenishment. But, they're not going to have the cavalry this time. Their infantry is going to be extremely depleted. Their archers are going to be a bit depleted. So, less arrows coming out. And I imagine the Norse army itself is going to be much, much stronger. So, yeah, that was a cool kind of nice battle. Uh, to get ourselves into this campaign. And as I said, if you guys want to see more of it, just let me know in the comments down below. I'd be happy to do a few more, especially if they get any epic battles. Because again, these guys are very much trusted in the Discord. So, you know, I know if they're going to send me in a battle replay, I know it's going to be, you know, decent or at least lead on to something really decent. That battle's fun, uh, seeing the Norse charge in. A nice little one to get us in on Boxing Day, I think, uh, for sure. So if we take a look at the kills, you know, they did kill a thousand of the Welsh army. So that's going to be good for the next battle, the follow-up battle that is coming. The Welsh are going to definitely feel it. And yeah, you can see their front line just absolutely smashed. I mean, even their tier threes got pretty beaten up. A lot of them on orange and these ones even on red as well. Their cavalry basically completely annihilated. So yeah, this battle is definitely going to have consequences for the next one. That is for sure. And I can't believe how well the shield biters did against the tier three sword infantry. They really put up a great fight. So yes, if you guys enjoyed this, be sure to drop a like and a comment. Let me know if you want to see the follow-up battle to this uh, with an entire Norse king army, the king's own army, then let me know in the comments down below and I'll see you guys in the next one.